Saturday of the first week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the customs post. Jesus said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. January 14th, Saturday of the first week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Hebrews 4, 12 to 16. This passage begins by speaking about the Word of God. It's called living and effective, sharper than a two-edged sword. Remember, in Hebrew thinking, the Word is not simply a symbolic representation of a reality. Rather, it makes that thing present. When somebody says elephant, there's an elephant in the room. That word and deed are pretty much the same thing. Therefore, the word of God is not simply a theory about God. It's the very revelation of who God is and the making present of God's authority. And then in the second half, we hear about how Jesus is our great high priest. Unlike the high priests of the Old Testament, who were fallible, who would die after a certain period, Jesus has offered one sacrifice for us for all time. And that one sacrifice is the gift of himself. It's the perfect sacrifice. And therefore, Jesus, who is the perfect high priest, has also fully identified with us. How is he identified with us? By being tested in every way that we are tested, and yet being faithful. So we can be confident because he was faithful, and his fidelity helps us to be faithful. The Gospel is from Mark 2, 13-17. This is the call of Levi, who we also call Matthew. 
He's a tax collector. And at this time, tax collectors were hated. They collaborated with Roman authority. They had a reputation for being dishonest because the way of collecting taxes was to put out a bid and you would pay up front and anything you collected after that went into your pocket. So there was no incentive for honesty. And in fact, if somebody complained, they would be beaten up by the Roman troops. So there was no recourse. Tax collectors were hated. The Pharisees never ate with them because they considered what they had to be a type of contagion. They had caught evil. They had caught some of the sinfulness of the Romans. Jesus, on the other hand, eats with them. And why? Because he's come for the sick, not for the righteous. Jesus recognizes that even though the tax collectors have brought this alienation upon themselves, they're still alienated. And he's not going to make it worse by distancing himself from them. He's going to reach out into their lives and heal them with his love. Fear and guilt can never bring true conversion. They only bring conformity. Only love can bring conversion. Because conversion is a recognition that the sinfulness in which people live is a symptom of the brokenness of their hearts. And the only way we can heal their hearts is through our love. And may God bless us.